We're going to continue on the giraffe and Polly and me. Illustrated by Quinton Blake, Rondal, front, side, and the back. My jewel, somebody stole my jewels. If a few few moments later, a white porcelain laboratory hand with the wooden C still on it came flying out the same window, landed with a wonderful splattering crash just beside the bathtub. This was followed by a kitchen sink and, and an empty nor canary cage and the, and a in a in a four poster bed and two hot water bottles and a rocking horse with sewing machine and goodness knows that what else beside it looks as though some madam madman was ripping out the whole of the inside of the house because new piece of staircase bits of vast base stairs and 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 a whole lot a whole lot of old floorboard came, came whistling through the windows Then there was silence. I waited and waited, but no, but not another sound came from within the building. I crossed the road and stood right under the window and called out, Is anybody at home? There was there was no answer. In the end, it began to get dark, so I had to turn away and start walking home. But you, but you can, but you can bet your life nothing was going to stop me from hur hurrying, 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 hurrying. Back there again tomorrow morning to see what the next surprise was going to be. Period. When I got back to the Grover house the next morning, the first thing I noticed was the new door. The dirty old brown door had been taken out and in its place someone had fit the a brand new red door. The red one. Um The new door was fantastic, period. It was twice as high as the other one had been, and it had looked ridiculous. I couldn't begin to imagine who would I want a tremendous tall door like that in, in his house, unless it was, it, was a, it was a giant. As well as this, somebody has scrapped away the sole Notice on the shop window, now there was a whole lot of different rhyme over the glass. I stood there reading it and reading it and it tried to figure out what on earth it all, it all meant. The Lateranist Window clean, clean Company, get your window clean well, a lot of dirty ladder leaning against your house. We introduce Billy, the giraffe, the Pelly, the Duke of Hemsphere, and the monkey. I tried to catch some, some sign, sound of movement inside the house, but there was none. Until all of a sudden, out of the corner of my eye, I noticed that one of the windows on top of the floor was slowly beginning to open outwards. Then a head appeared at the open door. I stared at the head. The head stared back at me with big, round, black, dark eyes. It's a giraffe. Billy. Suddenly, a second window was flying wide open. And all the crazy, all the crazy things, which a gigantic, a gigantic white, white bird hop out and perch on the window still. I knew it was 
what this one was because it has I knew what this one is because of its amazing beak which has shaped like a huge orange coloring basin Pelican looked down at me and sang out oh I wish for a big fat fish I'm hungry as I ever could be a dish of fish is my only wish how far are we from from, from the sea question We are a long way from the sea. I could I call back to it, but there is a fish monger in the village, not far away. A fish what? A fish monger. Now, what on earth would that be? Asked the pelican. I have heard of a fish pot and a fish cake and a fish finger, but I had never heard of a fish monger. Are those monger good to eat? This question buffed me a, a bit. So I said, who is your friend in the next window? She is the giraffe, the pelican answer is she's not wonderful. Her, her legs are on the ground floor. Her head is looking out of the top flower uh, top of of the top window. As all if all this wasn't enough, the window on the first floor was flying flying wide open up the top out popped a monkey. The monkey stood on the window still and did a jiggly little dance. He was so skinny, he seems to made out made only out of his furry bits of wire. But he danced wonderfully well, and I clapped and cheered and did a little dance myself in return. We are the window cleaners, sang out the monkey. We are polish your glass till it's shining like brass. And it sparkled like the sun at, on the sea. We are quick, we are quick and polite. We will come day or night. The giraffe and Polly and me. We are we are a fabulous crew. We knew that what just what to do. We will never stop to drink tea. All your windows will glow when we give when we gave them a go, the giraffe and Pelly and me, as mission point. He, we use water and soap, plus some kindness and hope, but we never use ladders. Not, not we. We who knows ladders at all. When you are you, when you are thirty feet tall, no, not giraffe, not Pelly, Pelly. Not me. I stood there and rail. Then I heard the giraffe say to the pelican to the next window pally, My dear, be so good to be so good to as to fly down and bring that small person up here to talk to us. At once the pelican spray his white huge he would spread his huge white wings and fling down on the ground. On the road beside me, hop in, he said, open his enormous beak. I stared at the great orange beak and back away. Get on, go on, the monkey shouted up from in his window. The pelly isn't going isn't going to eat swallow you. Climb in, I said to Pelican. I will only get in if you promise not to shut your beak once I'm inside. You have nothing to fear, cried the pelican. And let me tell you why. I have a very special beak. Especially because I have. You will never see a beak of so, oh, so fine. I don't care where you go. There is much in this beak of mine. Help it and don't, and don't say no. You see, um, oh, what's his name? Billy. Want to go climb in the pelican's beak. Interesting. I will not hop in," he. I said, "unless you swear, Your Honor, you won't shut it because I'm, I am inside. I don't like small, dark places. When I have done what I'm just about to do," said the pelican, "I won't be able to shut it. You don't seem to understand what how my beat works. Show me," I said. "Watch it," cried the pelican, watching in amazement. On as the top half of the pelican begins to slide smoothly backward into his head, until the whole he was almost out of sight.
It bends and goes down inside the back of my neck. Cried the pelican. It's, is that not incredible? It is not magical. It's unbelievable, I said. Exactly what, like, the one of those metal tape measure my dad got at home. When it, when it's out, it's straight when you slide it back in and then it appear, disappeared. Previously, said the pelican, you see the top of top half is of no use to use to me unless I'm true I am a chewy fish. The bottom of half is what counts, my lad. The bottom half of my this glory be of mine is the bucket in which we carry our window clean water. So if I if I didn't slide the top half way, I'd be standing around all day long pulling it open. Exhibition point. So I slide it away for for the rest of my day as much point. So even so I'm I am still able to speak and wherever I'm flown, it would always it has always been known as a pelican panic beak. If I want to eat fish, that's my favorite dish. All I do is I give it a tweak in the blink of my an eye, or oh, out and pops, and then cry. It is the pelican panted beak. The pelican didn't eat him, but he carried him like a kangaroo. Stop showing off down there, shouted the monkey from the upstairs window. Hurry up and bring that small boat, small person up to us. The giraffe is waiting. I climb into the big, into the big orange beak and with a swoosh of wings, the pelican carried me back to its perch, perch on the perch, perch on the window. Still, the giraffe looked out of her window at me and said, "How do you, how do you do? What is your name, Billy?" I told her. Well, be well, well, Billy, she said, we need your help, and we need it fast. We must have some, some wind look clean. We have spent every penny we have on buying this house. We have got to earn some money, some more money. Quickly, the Pelly, to Pally, Polly, Pelly is starving. The monkey is finished, famished. I'm preaching, I'm preaching with hunger. The pelican needs fish. The monkey needs nuts. I'm him even more difficult to feed. I'm a generous, generous giraffe, and a, a generous giraffe cannot eat anything except the pink and purple flower of the tr tinkle twinkle tree. But those, as I am sure you know, are hard to to find and expensive to buy. The pelican cried out. Right now, I'm so hungry. I could eat a stove. There ain't a dime. Has everyone seen a salt sardin or a buck of rotten cod? I do eat the, the lot of upon the spot. I'm such a hungry bod. Every time the pelican spoke, I beak the beef I was standing and jiggling madly up and down, and the more sight he got, the more he jiggled. The monkey said, What pelly really crazy about? A hey, salmon. Salmon. Yes, yes, cried pelican. Salmon. Oh, the glorious salmon. I dream about it all day, but I never get any. And I dream about about walnuts. Shout the monkey. A walnut fresh from the tree is scrumptious, glorious, so flavory, savory, so sweet to eat that it makes me all wobbly just think about it. At exactly that moment, a huge white rhinoceros pulled up right below us, and a choke. Free in in blue and gold, you forgot out. Got out. He was carrying an blow in one one glove hand. Good heaven! I whispered. That's the Duke of Hemisphere. 
here, Carr. Who who is he? As the giraffe, he's the richest man in England. I said. The chaffer look knock on knock on the door of the grubber. He looked up and saw he saw the giraffe, the pelly, and the monkey and me all staring down at him at him from below, but not a muscle move in his face. Not an eyebrow was raised. The chuff the chuffner of very of very a very rich man are never surprised by anything they see. The chuffner said he's his grace was the Duke of has Hampshire has instructed me to deliver this envelope to the the to the ladder ladder list window cleaning company. That's us, cried the monkey. The giraffe said, Be so good as to open the envelope and read us the ladder. You have the postman or the police, uh, mailman, of course. The postman, post office man. The chauffeur unfolded the letter and began to read it. Dear sir, I saw your notice as I drove by this morning. I have been looking for a distant, decent window cleaner for the last 50 years, but I have not found one yet. My house has 600 has 677 window in it, not counting greenhouses. And all of them are filthy. Kindly come and see me as soon as possible. Your, your truly, yours truly, I'm sure. That added the commissioner in, in a voice filled with a we and respect. Was written by his, by his grace, the Duke of Hampshire, in his other own hand. The giraffe said to the chaffner, please tell this his Grace the Duke will, that will we will be will be with him as soon as we as possible. The chaffinier touched his cap and got back into the royal sea. Would would be shouted the monkey. Fantastic said the cry, the pelican. That must be the best window cleaning job in the world. Billy said the the giraffe. What is the house called? What do we what do we get there? It's called the Hamishire, Hamishire, Hamishire House. I say, I, it's just over the hill. I will show you the way. We are off, cried the monkey. We are off to see the Duke. The giraffe stopped, stooped low, and went out through the tall door. The monkey jumped off the window still on the giraffe back on to the giraffe back, the pelican with me in his beak, hanging on for for their for their life, flew across the pierce on the very top of the giraffe head, and away, away, away we went. It wasn't long before we came to the gates of Hamishire House as the giraffe moved slowly up the great wide driveway. We began to feel just a little bit nervous. What he like this dude, the giraffe asked me. I don't know, I said, but he was he is a very famous and very rich. People say he was twenty five gardeners. He has twenty five gardeners just to, to look after his flower beds. Through the huge house itself came into view, and what a how it was! It was a, like it was a palace. It was bigger than than a palace. That's makes your point. Just look at those windows! Cried the monkey. They will keep us going forever. Then suddenly we heard a man voice a short distance away to the right. I want those big block, big big black ones at the top of the tree. The man was shouting, "Get me those great big big black ones!" Exhibition point.
We peer around the bushes, saw an oldish, oldish, oldish man with a immersive white mustache standing under a tall cherry tree and pointed his walking stick in the air. There was a ladder against the tree. And another man who was probably a gardener up, was up the ladder. Give me those great big black juicy ones right at the very top. The old man was shouting, I can't reach them. Your, your, your grace, the gardener called back. The ladder isn't long enough. Don't, you shouldn't shout the Duke. The Duke. I was so looking forward to eat those those big ones. You see the gang right there. The villain and his gardeners. They got the big I think they are cherries, I believe. Let's make sure point. Here we go, here we go, the pelican whispered to me and a swish and a swoop he carried me up to the very top of the cherry tree and there he huge picked them. Billy, he whispered, picked them quickly and put in my beak. We will tell the story of the giraffe and Polly and me. It's like a longer book. Uh, like the character, so we have Billy, the Polly, 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 the Duke of Hampshire, the monkey, and giraffe. All four main the character and also our villain, of course, in the story. So yeah, we will continue on a few more parts. We hope you guys read the next few chapters. I hope you guys, I'm the best reader in the tire.